What's up, y'all? It's been a minute. I'm going to wait for some of you guys to come in. As y'all know, it's been a while since I've gone live. So I'll wait for some of you guys to come in. I'm always doing random live videos. <laughs> so I'll just wait for y'all to come in. What's up, family? Greetings. Greetings, everybody who is joining. So we're here to talk about the winter solstice and cleaning the body out. Um, and I just went to the grocery store and did a little grocery haul. So I thought, you know, why not get on here and show you guys what I've gotten so that you guys can kind of see how I navigate through this. So I'm going to wait a few more minutes to let more people come in. But let me see. Let me see who's out in here. What's up, y'all? Let me see. Show me some love. Let me know y'all in here. What's up, y'all? So, um, yeah, I got like tons of bags here because we didn't, I, I didn't been grocery shopping. So, as you guys know, yesterday was the the winter solstice, right? That the winter solstice started yesterday. Um, and for those of you who don't know what that is, I highly recommend that you start getting in alignment with learning about the different movements of the celestial bodies and how. And when I say celestial bodies, I'm talking about the moon, the earth, and all of the other different planets, the, the, the sun. They all go through different transitions throughout the year. Um, and these different transitions mark um, really important times in regards to how energy um, is, flow, is flowing and being harnessed throughout these different seasons. So yesterday was the winter solstice. Um, and it's a powerful time for cleansing and releasing um, just because winter itself is the season of death, right? Things are dying. So this is the time for you to release and to cleanse and to purge so that by the time we, we, we I can't even talk right, by the time we reach springtime, there is another shift that happens around March where we are able to rebirth, re, we rebuild at that time. So that is a great time for manifesting, rebuilding and replenishing. So this is a period where we are cleansing, where we are letting go, um, we are purging. And yesterday, uh, like I said, it was the winter solstice and I was pretty much guided by spirit to start a cleanse, a fruit cleanse. So I just came back from the store yesterday and I kind of just wanted to show you guys what I got from the store, how much I spent so that you can kind of see how I navigate through this. So as you can see, first and foremost, I got my golden kiwis on deck. Y'all know I love the golden kiwis. So I bought up some of those. Got my berries. These are raspberries. I got a couple of those. Let me see. I got some blackberries. And I love the berries because the berries are um, a bit acidic in nature. And so what that means is that they're going to be really good cleansers of the intestinal tract. I know a lot of people, you know, are the, the doctor, they're part of the Dr. Sebi uh, crew or whatever and are heavily influenced by this alkaline versus acidic thing. But I don't really subscribe to that because I understand that there is a difference between, um, there's a difference between knowing what foods to eat that have an acidic nature to them versus foods that are alkaline and all acidic foods are not bad for you and all alkaline things are not good for you so I don't really subscribe to this whole everything has to be alkaline type of thing uh, your most acidic fruits like your lemons and your limes and things like that are extremely good at cleansing out the body um, and detoxifying your body so these are super powerful foods so we got to keep the berries on point I also got some um, strawberries okay what else do I have? I got some grapes, some green grapes, just because grapes are also great for cleansing out your lymphatic system. Oh, you can't see them. Got some grapes. These are super good for cleansing out the lymphatic system. These are not seeded grapes. Um, the store that I went to did not have seeded grapes, and I was okay with taking that sacrifice. Um, of course, I always recommend that if you can to get seeded 
organic non-gmo fruits of course that's always going to be the best recommendation but some fruit is better than no fruit at all and we have to be realistic and understand that we currently live in an environment where we don't always have access to the best quality of food unless you want to spend a lot of money trying to get stuff shipped over to you etc so you're not going to die by eating a seedless grape um, most seedless grapes are not genetically engineered um, and I think that that's also something that a lot of people need to study and understand like what creates a seedless grape it's not that they are being genetically engineered it's just that they are doing grafting so they are taking one type of plant and when this type of plant produces a certain type of characteristic that they like which means that maybe some of the grapes that this particular plant produce have minimum seeds in it in order to keep producing that same type of plant identical to that they take pieces of that particular plant and they just keep regrowing it and regrowing it so take a cutting of it and then let that cutting grow roots and then they start growing a whole new plant from a cutting from the mother plant instead of taking a seed and regrowing the plant and the reason why they do that with a lot of fruits is again that's how you clone a fruit or a vegetable in order to get the same characteristic whereas if you grow something from seed it is going to have genetic diversity and it's going to uh -oh, i'm getting blown up um if you plant something from a seed you're going to have genetic diversity so that seed is going to grow into a plant that's similar to the mother grape plant but it's going to have different characteristics because just like you are a product of your mom and dad you're their seed but you don't look exactly like them you don't talk exactly like them you may have a different skin color different hair texture etc so that is genetic variation and that cannot be controlled so when these farmers want to control the type of fruits that they are producing they use grafting as a way to get the exact type of fruit that they're looking for and eventually that's how your different seedless grapes and seedless oranges and things like that have come about they are um they are doing uh, grafting so that juice about to be so loud so I'm actually going to be eating a lot of this I am NOT going to juice everything and the reason why I'm not going to be juicing everything is because although I think that juicing is fantastic and it is a great way to rapidly hydrate and energize your body um, you lose the fiber right and at this point I am NOT trying to lose the fiber I just want to be able to eat a wholesome diet full of fruits um, no vegetables, no cooked food, no nothing. So I'm only strictly doing fresh fruits. Um, I may have some juices. I may have some coconut water here and there. Um, I may enjoy smoothies, but the goal here is to just really thrive off of eating whole fruits. So I'm not going to be doing juicing. I feel like for juicing, that is something that is more like on an advanced or intermediate level uh, when it comes to, well, actually, it's more advanced or expert level when you're trying to do a deep cellular cleanse. And I'm um, not saying that the fruits can't get you there, but doing juices will get you there a lot quicker because you can bypass the digestive uh, process and you don't have to necessarily uh, deal with your body having to break down the cellulose and different fibers in the fruit. So there's different levels to understanding how to maximize the efficiency of a detox or a cleanse in your body, depending on whether you are eating whole fruits or you're liquefying them by doing smoothies or you are doing a complete juice which has removed the fiber you're only getting the liquid components and the natural sugars that are present so just different different ways and if you guys want to learn more about what I'm explaining definitely make sure that you guys get my detox guide because I kind of break that down to very easy to understand language so that you can start to maximize and understand what does it actually mean to detox like a lot of people think that detoxing is taking a herbal tea or using some herbal pills and then that's it you're detoxing but that is not what detoxing means detoxing is a physical process that your body initiates and that is initiated through what you are eating so you can't take a tea and then that's going to start detoxification the body has to be in a certain state in order for it to cleanse and regenerate and if you're eating cooked food if you're eating animal products if you are eating processed foods and even if you are eating vegetables all of those things are going to hinder and slow down the body's natural tendency to want to detox itself. So fruits are the way to go. These are the only things that are going to energize you, hydrate you, give you the fiber to help clean out your intestines, etc. in order to help you start cleansing out. So um, that's, that's enough of the little science behind that. But let me finish showing you guys what I got. So I got the, the strawberries. I got a couple of melons. 
um, this is a new melon that I saw. It's called a Dino Melon from Brazil. I got a couple of these. Melons are extremely good for cleansing and detoxing just because they are high in water content and fiber. Um, and they're very astringent. And when I say astringent, that means that they have a high ability to pull on your lymphatic system and help flush the lymphatic system, which is your body's internal sewer system. And that's what you want to cleanse out when you want to get rid of toxins and disease in the body. You got to cleanse the lymphatic system. That's like your body's septic tank and all of the waste from your cells in your body, all of the waste from different bacteria, fungi, viruses, etc., that you've come into contact with throughout your food journey, um, exposure uh, from in the environment. A lot of people get parasites and all types of stuff just from the soil and in the air, etc. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, like for example, a lot of people don't know this, but like something that's super common amongst a lot of people is herpes. And herpes is something that can not only be transmitted sexually by physical contact with another person, but a lot of people are contracting herpes and they don't even know it, but they're getting it from their food. Herpes is a type of, um, it's a parasitic infection, really. It's a parasitic infection that can be passed on to you from soil or from contaminated soil because we got feces in the soil from different animals, like from the pigs and the cows and the chickens and stuff. So they are carriers of this type of stuff. And this type of virus, uh, well, it, it, it creates a virus load, but it's really a type of parasite um, that is proliferating in your body and... It's a zoonotic type of illness. And if you've never heard of me talk about this term zoonotic, you need to research it. But it simply talks about different viral uh, infections, bacterial infections, etc. that can be passed on from animals to humans. And that can happen by you consuming food products from contaminated animals. So whether you are eating dairy products, whether you are eating meat products, etc. from animals that have been... Um, infested with different bacteria, you can develop these issues without sexually being involved with anybody. And that is something that a lot of people don't really understand. So uh, making sure that you understand that, watching what you're putting in your body, making sure that you are thoroughly cleansing, not just your fruits and vegetables, but staying away from the meat and animal products. Like there is a reason why we as humans are not really designed to thrive off of those top type of foods. They are unclean. And when I say unclean, I mean that those foods are typically full of parasites, bacteria, fungi, and all of these things are living organisms that have the ability to hijack your nervous system and make you eat stuff. But, um, what was I saying? I don't even know what I was talking about, but... Um, eating these, eating these types of things, like you have to properly clean your food. The meats are unclean. We're not designed to eat them because you have to think about it, you guys. Cows and stuff, they live in nasty, dirty environments. And when I say nasty, they're living out in nature where they're walking around and they're like, they're, they're, they're walking around on feces and different things like that. And they are also in unnatural environments because man wants to farm them for food. So they're not being fed their proper diets because they're, they're just being fed certain stuff that's going to fatten them up and grow them quickly. They're, they're poking them with a bunch of growth hormones to make them reproduce um, and constantly produce milk and stuff. So that is unnatural for these animals as well. So that affects their body chemistry and makes them more susceptible to illness and disease. They catch parasites and guess what? They can't get rid of them because they don't have the same type of, um, what, what word, consciousness and ability as we do as humans. They can't go out and buy, you know, a, a liquid cleanse detox program in order to get rid of parasites in their body. Once they capture, a, well, I'm not going to say capture, but once they accumulate parasites in their body, they typically live with them for the rest of their lives unless um, they are being dewormed by a caregiver, etc. But do you think that these farms that mass produce your milk, your yogurt, your cheese, your pork chops, your steak, etc., give a damn about any of that? That is an added cost that they have to worry about in order to quote unquote make sure these meats are clean or healthy and they don't care. So, most of you guys, especially if you eat sushi, like if you eat sushi, 
you probably have parasites right now. Like all of us probably have parasites because we've grown up in an environment where we've been programmed to eat so many flesh foods and they're not natural for us to eat these things. They're very unclean, okay? And it doesn't matter if you're baking it, if you're, if you're searing it, if you're frying it, a lot of these parasites don't die because of high heat. So you can still eat them and have some of the eggs hatch inside of your body and then you have a full-blown parasitic infection and then you're wondering why you can't stop eating bread and sugary snacks and potatoes and you always want rice or your mental is not where you need it to be. You're constantly paranoid or have a lot of anxiety and different emotions. You're angry all the time. Like those sometimes are not emotions or expressions that are coming from within your being like there are entities living inside of you that are literally hijacking your central nervous system and pretty much controlling you so the fight to healing yourself and overcoming this it starts with the stomach like it starts with the gut and i always say this too your first brain is in your gut this is why you feel everything here before your mind can start to understand what it is that it's processing. When someone hurts your feelings or when you feel sad or when you're scared, you typically feel that here in the stomach. And then your brain tries to make sense of it and tries to compartmentalize the expression of emotions that you're feeling, the energy that you're feeling. So everything starts in the gut. So if the gut is tainted and full of bacteria, fungus, viruses, parasites, etc., then the mental is going to be just as cloudy. Your spiritual well-being is going to be just as cloudy. So cleansing is something that we need to take seriously, you guys, and we got to do it frequently. Like this is not something that you should just do once a year. You should be doing this periodically throughout the year at minimum four times a year. But some people can be really extreme and they do it, you know, monthly. It's up to you. But the fruits are the things that are going to help you purge. In addition to using, you know, special herbs to help stimulate the organs so that they start purging and cleansing. But yeah, it, it's a science to this, you guys. And there is no magical pill. There is no magic surgery. There is no magic procedure that you can do that is going to rid you of disease, cure you from cancer, reverse diabetes, etc. If you don't change what you're eating. That's the main thing. And you have to think about why are we constantly being bombarded with advertisements and all types of stuff that want us to eat a certain way because they know that if we become gluttonous, that if we continue to indulge in the flesh foods, if we keep eating the junk food, that that is going to take us further and further and further away from heaven on earth. And the foods is the gateway on how we get there through our bodies and through our minds. So... And I tell people all of this too, like if you've never experienced just being on a completely plant-based diet or even just eating fresh fruits and nothing else, it's a whole type of like mental shift and spiritual shift that you go through when you consume these types of foods. And I can't explain it. It's like you just tap into a whole different being when you eat certain foods. They have energy in them. Like all of your foods, they have something called photon energy in them. And this is sunlight information. So the sunlight it vibrates at a frequency and everything is vibration and these vibrations are like little pieces of information that you can literally absorb and use it to to highlight certain aspects of yourself and to enrich in yourself so using the food foods that have been grown in nature that have had the sunlight beating on them and absorbing that vibrational energy. That is how you lift your vibration as a human. You got to eat the foods that you were biologically adapted to consume. So that's that. Um, what else did I get? I got some pineapples. I got a couple of pineapples. I got a big bag of grapefruits. Um, I got some coconut water. This is the coconut. This is like the only coconut water that I like for real, unless I buy fresh coconuts from Jungle Gems. That's where I get my coconuts from. I buy a whole box when I go. Um, this is Harmless Harvest. Um, it's expensive. I'm not going to lie. A little bottle like this is $5. Um, and then they have a bigger bottle, which is just two of these. And that one is $10. Like not, It's like $8 or $9.99. I can't remember. But that's the only coconut water that I like. It tastes the best. I got a few juices because these were on sale. Um, this one is the Code Press Juice Blend Citrus and Cayenne. 
it's a, a simple truth organic so this is like a kroger brand it has apple orange coconut water pineapple lemon ginger and cayenne in it tastes pretty good so i bought like four of the i bought all of them and they only have four on the shelf i already drank one but i bought those so that stops me from having to juice on my own and then i just got um some more i got some more pineapples and then i got some hydrogen peroxide because that's what i clean my fruit with you got to clean your fruit soak it in some hydrogen peroxide mixed with some water to kind of kill bacteria and fungi and stuff that could potentially be lying on your fruits because again we still have to clean our produce as well like just because it's a fruit doesn't mean that it's like you know that the, the, they don't accumulate bacteria and things like that so you have to clean it so i bought that and then I have, you know, my distilled water so that I can make my herbs, my herbal teas and things like that. And then I also got, I already had these, but I got a bunch of lemons and limes because I love to drink limeade or lemonade. And I naturally sweeten it um, with dates so that I don't have to use any type of added sugar. And this is like what my grocery haul is looking like right now. Now I want to answer some questions because I see that you guys have been making some questions so I want to join but my doctor says that fruit is bad for me because of the sugar fruit that's in it I'm a diabetic so let's digest that so a lot of people are scared to increase their intake in fruit because this is something that we hear all of the time that fruit has too much sugar I'm a diabetic that's gonna affect me in a negative way well the thing is what doctors are not telling you is that there are many different types of sugar so sugar the itself is just a generic term that is used to categorize multiple types of sugar. So you have simple sugars, which is what you're going to find in your fruits. These are called monosaccharides. These are simple, meaning that they are easy for the body to break down and absorb. The body prefers these because they directly break down into glucose, which is what your body is fueled by. The body runs off of sugar. You are a fruit frugivore. You need fruit in order to function properly. There is no other food on the face of this planet that is going to hydrate you, energize you, and cleanse you out like fruit is. We're designed to eat this. This is the only type of fruit also that you can consume without having to kill the plant or kill another animal in order to consume it. Like the fruit is there for the taking. And it has seeds in it so that you can constantly regrow it and reproduce it. Like it, this is a perfect food, you guys. We've been lied to, we've been scammed, and we've been bamboozled to think that we're supposed to eat a bunch of vegetables and a bunch of meat and animal products and that fruit should just be on the background as a snack every once in a while. But this should be the foundation of any healthy plant-based diet, not your vegetables. Those are hard to digest. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So your fruits, they're made of simple sugars, monosaccharides. And if you guys have never heard of these concepts, go Google it or get inside of my plant-based from scratch program because I break these concepts down and I teach you about plant-based nutrition. So not only inside of my plant-based program do I help transition you to a fully plant-based diet, but I teach you the science behind the nutrition aspects. So it's so much more than just swapping out ingredients and just eating plant-based foods. You have to know how to thrive on a plant-based diet. So that means understanding what are the foods that are going to give you the best nutrition. And eating a bunch of vegetables and beans and stuff is not going to give you the best nutrition because those foods are not what the body prefers as a fuel source. Those are just things that we have developed a liking for because society has told us to eat those things. But we need to be eating our fruits. So if you want to learn more about this, breaking it down into detail and then understanding what to eat to get certain nutrients, I highly advise you guys to visit my website, www.awakeningakila.com and click on the tab that says go plant-based and sign up for my program um, and, and get started um, or Google it. Like, you don't, if you don't, if you're not ready to take those steps to go plant-based, Google it. So you got monosaccharides, simple sugars. Then you move on to disaccharides, which are a little more complex, which means that instead of it being just one type of sugar in that food or that substance, there are multiple types of sugar, making it more complex which is going to be a little bit harder for the body to absorb and break down into a usable source of energy. Then you have polysaccharides. Polysaccharides means many sugars. So that means there are tons of different sugars all connected together in these 
complex chains of sugar, which makes them extremely hard for the body to break down and use as energy. Examples of polysaccharides are going to be your complex carbohydrates, such as rice, potatoes, oats, bread, things like that. Those are extremely complex, hard for the body to digest. And this is why when you eat those types of foods and other harder to digest foods, these things make you sleepy when you eat them. You get the itis. And that is because these foods are not easy for the body to handle. And digestion itself is a very energy absorbing, time consuming process. And this is why you don't have energy to do anything else besides lay around and eat and then go to sleep because you're eating foods that do not help you thrive. They don't energize you. They clog you up and they're hard for your body to process. So the simpler the food, the more effective your body will be at absorbing the nutrients from them and using them as an energy source, as well as the less energy your body has to use breaking them down, the more energy your body will have available to cleanse and to rejuvenate itself because the body is self-cleansing, it is self-healing, it is self-rejuvenating. So you don't have to take a bunch of stuff to detox. The body knows how to do that on its own. We just got to get out of the way and give it the time to do it. So that's the first thing. Let me keep going. So, so shaky Ross, eating fruits is not going to affect your diabetes. In fact, it's going to be the way that you cure it. So if you stop eating everything else and just start eating more of your fruits, and uh, observe how your body responds, you'll be able to naturally uh, heal, heal from your diabetes. Because diabetes is really just a metabolism disorder because your body doesn't know how to handle the large amounts of sugar that you are consuming because you're eating complex sugars. You're eating the polysaccharides and the disaccharides from the fructose, the high corn syrup, the high fructose corn syrup that's in your beverages and in other foods. You're eating too many rices, too many potatoes, too much bread, and you're eating fruits in small portions because you think that's going to make you sick when it should be the opposite. You need to be eating more fruits, okay? Additionally, I said I was going to talk about this, but your vegetables. A lot of people think that when they hear the word plant-based or veganism that that automatically means, okay, eat more vegetables. But really, again, focus on your fruits. The reason why is because the vegetables are made out of a carbohydrate called cellulose. Cellulose is something that we do not have the enzymes in our stomach to break down properly. We are not a cow, we are not a horse, we do not have multiple stomachs in order to help us fully break down the coarseness of leafy green vegetation. This is why if you eat a lot of broccoli, if you eat a lot of kale, if you eat a lot of collard greens, cabbage, etc., you often experience gassiness, bloating, indigestion, constipation, etc. These things are hard to digest. We do not possess the enzymes in our digestive tract in order to fully and effectively break those down to extract nutrients from them. I also want to mention that vegetables are not as hydrating as our fruits. Like if you take a leaf of lettuce compared to a grape and you squish them and try to extract juice out of them, you're going to get way more hydration out of your grape than you are going to get out of a piece of lettuce or kale, etc. And that is because they do not contain high water content. And this is the only way you can actually hydrate your body. Water doesn't hydrate you. This is why I don't tell people to drink a gallon of water a day. I really only just use water to cleanse my palate or to make my herbal teas. I do not use water as a way to hydrate my body. Water is just going to dissolve toxins and flush them out of the body. It's a solvent. So use it as such. You are never going to hydrate on a gallon of water. You're just going to oversaturate yourself with H2O. If you really want to hydrate, eat your fruits, drink your fresh fruit juices. Nobody's going to tell you this though, you guys. This is why water is a multi-billion dollar industry. They got everybody out here fighting, combating with each other about what's the best water to drink. Well, I drink alkaline water. Well, mine's is spring water. Mine's is distilled. None of it is going to hydrate you. So why are y'all stressing about what type of water? Like I said, use your water as a solvent. You can use it to cleanse your palate. When you want to refresh the palate, you can use it when you're making your herbal products. Um, I prefer distilled water for that reason because distilled water is empty, so it'll work better when you're trying to make your herbal products, etc., your teas. But when you want to hydrate, come to your fruits. And you can just tell the difference when you're thirsty and you drink a cup of water, you still be feeling thirsty. Your lips start getting dry, etc., and that is proof enough that water doesn't hydrate you. 
but the fruit juices, the water inside of your fruits, when you eat those, you feel like, how can I explain it? Fruits are just wetter than water. So they have the ability to hydrate you on a higher level than water does. And that's the secret that nobody wants to tell you. So let's keep going. Let me keep going. We love you. I love you back. Do you have any books? I do. I actually have an entire detox guide on my website. It's called the 21 Day Raw Reset which includes a breakdown of all this stuff that I'm explaining to you in addition to uh, recipes that you can use for juicing, making smoothies, um, and even some raw options if you wanna do like a whole raw cleanse, etc. So I highly recommend that you check that out. Um, if you want full breakdown of what foods to eat and how to smoothly transition to a completely plant-based diet, then you will wanna get into my plant-based from scratch program. That has everything in it including recipes, cooking tutorials, etc. Does dehydrating fruits take away from the nutritional value of sugar levels? Um, so I would say uh, if you dehydrate a fruit, so dehydration literally, literally means that you are removing the water content from the fruit. So that is going to make the fruit more uh, drying to the body. So you're removing what's gonna hydrate you and instead you're just only consuming the fiber and the sugars in the fruit. So this is why when you eat dried fruits, for example, like if you're eating dried figs and dried berries and things like that, those are going to contain a higher input of sugar versus if you were to just eat a fresh blueberry or a fresh fig, etc. because the water in there actually helps to, um, what word am I looking for? spread out the absorption of the natural occurring sugars. Um, it is not bad to eat dried fruits. Um, like you can enjoy them occasionally if you want as a snack, but I would always recommend that you eat them in their fresh whole form, which means while the water is still intact in them, because it's gonna be better for your body. Anytime you eat something that is dried, whether it's a cracker, a cookie, a chip, um, a piece of dried fruit, your body has to pull liquid from within you to help break that down so that it can be utilized as an energy source so that actually contributes to dehydration of your body so you would want to make sure that you're eating your fruits in fresh form any other questions so far and i'm getting thirsty what do i want i really want some of these kiwis but i'm gonna I'm wait on those What else, you guys? I'm only going to be on here for an hour. No more than that. So if you have any more questions um, about the, the cleanse or just incorporating more fruits, like there is, like, like I keep saying this, and I say this all the time, and I think it goes over everybody's heads, but there is no other way to heal your body. There is no other way. Do you believe that the human body can survive, survive strictly off of fruit though? I'm heavily overweight and I'm trying to lose my, and I'm trying to lose some, but I don't want to place myself into starvation mode where my body is holding fat. So we are designed to, to fully function off of fruit. And this is where I encourage you guys to start doing a little more research into biology and the chemistry of the human body. Um, the cells inside of your body require sugar as a fuel source. This is why when you eat sugar, your pancreas, which plays a huge role in digestion, releases a hormone called insulin, which is a messenger that tells your cells to open up so that they can take in the sugar and use it as an energy source. When the cells stop responding to the insulin and they don't take in the sugar, this is what leads to diabetes. The blood remains high in sugar because it's not being utilized. That in turn makes your blood thick and sluggish, which affects circulation. So this is why people who have diabetes, oftentimes, if they let it get too bad, they have to start getting stuff amputated because the circulation is so slow throughout the body because the blood is so thick and the cells are not eating the sugar. This is also why you have low, low energy all the time and fatigue, etc. Your body needs the sugar, but the problem is when you are eating the wrong types of sugar, 
meaning the polysaccharides from all of the rice that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis, from all of the bread, the biscuits, the, the potatoes, the french fries, the hamburger buns, all of those things are full of so much sugar, polysaccharides, many sugars that are extremely complex and hard to break down. Eventually, your body is going to be like, wait a minute, I cannot process all of this. We are at our capacity. And so what starts happening is that your liver actually starts producing certain uh, chemicals that tells your liver and other organs in your body and the cells, the fat cells in your tissue uh, and your muscle cells to actually hold on to all of this excess sugar and they store it as fat for a rainy day. So this is why a lot of people, you typically see them being obese or overweight when they have diabetes because the body doesn't know what to do with all of this sugar, so it stores it as fat. So if you want to lose weight, if you want to rid yourself of the condition called diabetes, you have to stop eating these complex, hard to digest sugars, and you have to replace them with the simple foods. You also have to incorporate movement. You have to burn energy so that the cells in your body want to eat the sugars that you're eating from your fruits. If they're already full and fat and full and at capacity because you're eating too many polysaccharides, they're not going to be responsive to any type of sugar. So there's like different things that you have to do to rebalance your body's chemistry when it comes to dealing with diabetes. And the first thing is you have to start breaking down the fat storage that is full of all of those unused sugars. So you got to work out. You can work out by riding your bike. You can walk. Um, you can start jump roping. You can do many different things, but the whole goal is you have to move your body to not only invigorate your circulation, but you have to burn calories. You have to use up the excess that you're carrying. This is also why a lot of people who often want to lose weight really quickly go on a ketogenic diet. And I'll talk about that really briefly. A ketogenic diet is when you purposefully put your body in starvation mode. The body runs off of sugars. I've already said this before. When the body doesn't get enough sugar, it will switch into starvation mode called ketosis. And that is when the body will burn muscle and fat tissue as a fuel source momentarily as a way to continue to thrive and to exist. This is why people who are on a ketogenic diet rapidly lose weight. I'm talking 10, 20, 30 pounds in months when they are in ketosis because the body is literally burning all of the excess fat in their body, all of their muscles, etc., in order to run. It needs energy. It needs a fuel source, and it is designed to run on fat and muscle tissue in extreme uh, starvation emergencies, okay? This is the same concept of like when a bear hibernates. They stuff themselves until the point where they build up a lot of fat, and they get fat, and then they hibernate for months and their body burns all of that excess fat as a fuel source, but then when they wake up, they go back to eating things that are an energy source for them. So, um, so same thing with your body. Ketogenesis is a way to tap into that. But what I will say, when it comes to ketogenic diets, these ketogenic diets out here are telling you to eat large amounts of animal products. They're telling you to eat large amounts of dairy products and lots of fats. I do not recommend that. That is going to be terrible on your liver, your kidney, your digestive system. And when you eat in excess of these types of proteins, that can cause kidney stones, gallbladder issues, so many different problems, okay? And a lot of people who do these ketogenic diets, they often experience these types of challenges and digestive distress because your body is not designed to run off of fats. That is an emergency mechanism. So you can't live like that for forever. The body is not designed to be powered by eating too many meats and cheeses and, and things like that. It wants fruit. It wants fruit. Um, is there a fruit that you would stay away from? That you would say stay away from? Um, in general terms, no. Now, there are going to be some things that you would want to avoid if you are healing some very serious conditions. And that's where we get into, like, if you're trying to cure herpes and different things like that, there are some things that you want to avoid. Um, but if you're looking to do some serious stuff like that, I'm going to tell you to just send me a message so that we can put you on a special plan and create a whole little regimen for you because there's going to be some different things that you need to incorporate for doing stuff like that.
But whether you believe it or not, you guys, you can heal from herpes. You can heal from AIDS and other things like that. Like, you are not stuck with those things for life. You just got to know how to clean your body out. And you got to know how to tap into a deep, cellular detox. And these are the things that you are not going to be able to do if you're still eating cooked food. And it doesn't matter what it is. You could be eating a cooked vegan diet. doesn't matter. You are not going to heal any of those types of diseases doing that. You cannot fully cleanse and flush and detox your body eating any type of cooked food. Nor can you do it if you're eating animal products. This is why I stress a plant-based diet with fruits being the emphasis of your foundation. That's it. And y'all have heard me say this so much. It should be stuck in y'all brains by now, but I understand also because I started where a lot of you guys are. I used to live the standard American diet. I used to drink alcohol all the time. I used to love Olive Garden and eat a bunch of cheese and meat and hot wings and potato wedges, etc. I enjoyed it too. But then when my body started responding in unhealthy ways and I started developing these terrible digestive issues and when my vagina was angry with me all the time and I kept having reproductive issues and vaginal infections, etc. Those were all key indicators letting me know that my body's chemistry was out of whack and that I was full of toxins. I also couldn't boo-boo, you guys. I literally was only having one bowel movement a week. I couldn't go to the bathroom, so all of my toxic waste was just building up inside of my body, making me even more sick. I had to change my lifestyle in order to get rid of those things. And that's what ultimately guided me down this path to become who I am today. It wasn't because I just woke up one day and decided, oh, I want to be, you know, a health coach. I want to teach people how to be healthy. I love this stuff. Like, no, it didn't happen like that for me. It became a necessity because I had to heal myself. And then once I saw the power in how I could change my body by eating differently um, and how it affected my mental expansion and my spiritual growth and development, that's when it became passionate for me to do these things. Um, I experienced it firsthand. This is why I also tell you guys, you can always accept the information that I give you and other information from other people, but verify it first by actually using it and seeing how your body responds. You can't say that something doesn't work just because Dr. Sabi didn't say the same thing as me or whoever else you listen to is not saying the same things as me. And because you value their opinion more, you're going to shut down what it is that I'm talking about. No, it's okay to accept information from various sources, but the true knowledge comes from you using it on yourself and then creating your own personal experience. I didn't know that fruits were the actual cure to everything until I actually enjoyed a whole fruit diet, until I started juicing on nothing but fruits, etc. You have to experience it in order to truly understand it and to know. It's a difference between, oh, I read this, but I know, I know that these are the healing cures for everything. And this is the one thing that nobody's going to tell you in the medical field. They're going to feed you everything but the fruits and they're going to give you a bunch of processed shit. They're not going to give you, they're not going to give you this. They're not going to teach you how to do this. I'm not here to have you as a lifelong customer. If I do my job right as a wellness coach and as a plant-based nutrition counselor for you, then that means that at some point down the line, you are going to graduate from needing me to hold your hand. You are going to know how to eat to heal your body. You're going to know what foods to eat if you want to boost your iron. You're going to know what foods to eat if you need to increase your healthy fatty acids, etc. Because that's what I'm here to share with you. I'm here to show you how to heal your body by sharing my journey with healing myself. That's what my whole brand Awakening Aquila actually stands for and represents. Every day I am awakening this higher version of myself and that's Aquila. A lot of you guys don't know, but Aquila is not my government name. I was born and raised as Brittany. But my late grandfather, before he passed away, he used to be a revolutionary, very much like who I am today. And as, as a young girl, he was trying to teach me and introduce me to this type of stuff. But I was young and I was already indoctrinated and I didn't understand what he was trying to express to me. But one day he told me, you need to pick a new name for yourself. Because Brittany, that ain't it. That, that's some whitewash name. You need a name that is truly reflective of your indigenous nature and of your true essence. And Aquila was the name that I chose. He gave me a list 
I chose Aquila at 12, 11, 12 years old and held it on, held on to it in my pocket for a very long time until I went through my spiritual awakening back when I was like 22, 23, somewhere around there. And that's when I started realizing like, holy crap, Aquila, which means wise or intelligent noble woman in Swahili. I was becoming her. And I started wanting to showcase my journey. I was so passionate about the healing that I experienced from changing my lifestyle and from eating plant-based foods. I was so passionate that I just naturally started making videos and I started a YouTube channel and I created my Instagram account just to show people like, look, this is what I'm doing and this is working for me. Like y'all gotta try it too. So Awakening Aquila is about me awakening her, this higher version of me, while also showing you guys how to do the same. And I'm teaching y'all how to use food as medicine. I'm teaching you guys about herbalism and how to use the herbs to stimulate your organ system so that they can function to their highest ability. And I'm also teaching you about other holistic practices that are going to help you improve your spiritual, mental, and physical well-being. So it's holistic. And that's what I'm here for. I'm not here to rob you and to keep you coming back to me for the rest of your life because that means that I failed. If you need me for the rest of your life, then that means that I ain't doing my job. This should be a, a momentary stop in your life. And then from here, once you gain what you need from me and you start employing these skills in your life, then it is then your duty to start teaching other people. Each one, teach one. That's the process. That's how we change the world. You don't change the world by feeling like it's your responsibility to fix everything that's wrong in the world. You start by fixing you. You be the change that you want to see in the world. And then everything that you touch, everything that comes into contact with you will have no choice but to be a reflection of your growth, of your, your sacrifice, your changes, etc. So that's why I do what I do, you guys. I don't do this particularly just for you, but I'm doing it for everybody. How, okay, hold on, I missed it. How do you know when enough is enough, though, as far as appetite goes? Like, can one overeat on fruit? Um, you know... Because your body will send you natural, uh, like you'll get natural sensations to know when you're full. Like for example, we don't know this and I'll just say this. We don't really understand what our body's natural communication signals are because when we're eating, we're typically eating several different things at a time versus eating a mono meal where we're just only eating one type of thing at a time. And when you're eating multiple things at a time, you're constantly stimulating different palates on your tongue and that can interfere with you being able to understand when you've had enough of something. But when you're eating just one thing at a time, that is easy for your body to recognize when it's had enough of that particular type of substance. And typically, the sensation that you will feel when you get full, I call it almost like a subtle gag response. Like, you'll eat so much and then eventually you'll get to a point where you take another bite and it'll literally feel like, okay, if I eat another bite of this, I'm going to like throw this up. Like I don't like, I can't tolerate tasting this anymore. It's like you get repulsed, like you don't want to eat anymore. That is the feeling that you are looking for to let you know that you've had enough in that particular meal. And then you should stop eating. So have you ever experienced that before? Where you get that that gag response and you're like, mm -mm, I can't take another bite. That's what you're looking for. So whether you're eating just all strawberries, pineapples, etc., your body will let you know when it's had enough. And then additionally, when it comes to eating fruits, you're going to require a lot less of these to get full than you would if you were eating complex carbs. And the reason why is because fruits take up more volume. They hold more space. Because they have the fiber, the water content in them, etc., they hold more space in your in your stomach. So you can get full off of eating five kiwis. But when you're eating pasta or rice and stuff, you can eat a lot of that before you get full. And that's because those foods don't really have a lot of uh, fiber or water in them. They're naturally going to dehydrate you and constipate you. So... You got to just be able to determine the differences. And again, you can only really measure that by experiencing it for yourself and trying it. So, like, literally. Oh, and another thing I wanted to say, too, like, when you are eating fruits, you'll need to eat more throughout the day. Like, 
Like I said, I can sit and eat five or six kiwis and I'll get full. But then an hour or two later, I will want more food. And that's because the calorie content is not going to be the same in eating five or six kiwis as it would be if I ate two cups of rice. And that's because the difference in sugar content. Many sugars or polysaccharides or complex carbohydrates, those are all the terms that are assigned to your rice, your potatoes, your bread, etc. Your pasta noodles, those have many sugars. So you're going to get way more sugars and calories from eating those than you are going to get from eating five kiwis. However, your body's going to process those five kiwis a lot easier and a lot better than it would those two cups of rice. And you're going to get more out of your fruit than you are in those complex carbs. So you just got to understand that. So you'll probably want to eat more frequently throughout the day. And that's okay. Eat when you're hungry. Once you've had your pineapple or your six or five kiwis and you're good for an hour or two, great. And then two hours later, if you need to eat again, eat again until you feel full. That's what you do. So you just got to learn what that is for your body. <clears throat> what else? Because I'm going to, I got 15 more minutes and then I'm out of here. And I need to put my beverages in the refrigerator. So I'll give you a few minutes while I put these in the refrigerator. All right, I'm back. All right. No more questions at this point. Because if you guys are done, then I will politely sign up off of here and finish going about my day. But I just felt really inspired to just show you guys what I got going on, what I'm doing, and to encourage you guys that if you have yet to consider, start making changes like immediately, especially with everything that's going on in this environment right now. Um, we have COVID and all this other stuff going on. This is the time now to learn how to build your body's defense system. And I'm going to tell you now, the only way you can strengthen your immune system and actually have a chance at fighting against some of this stuff is you've got to clean it out. And that comes with using your fruits to purge your lymphatic system. And I talked about the lymphatic system earlier. I'm not going to talk about it again. If you're just coming in, you'll just have to go back and watch this video. I'll actually probably post this on my YouTube as well so that you guys can come back and look at it. Because I have tons of videos that I've done on uh, Facebook and they're just sitting here. So I might actually gather all of those and upload them to my YouTube channel so you guys can just go back and watch them. Because I think it might be beneficial for you. Instead of having to scroll through all of the stuff on my page just to find those videos. So how do you know when enough is enough? Okay, you already answered that. Is there a time at night where you stop eating? My doctor says that eating after 8 is bad. Um, I would say 7 or 8 p.m. And that just has to do with following the natural cycles of your body. We are sun people, so we need to be in alignment with the sun. So when the sun is out and shining, that's when you should be eating at your heaviest. Like right now, it's, it's 3 o'clock. You should be eating your heaviest meal during the day when the sun is out. Dinner should actually be very light um, because the sun is down at dinner time, meaning that digestion is not as strong. So you shouldn't be eating, <clears throat> excuse me, a heavy meal. Juice. <clears throat> it got that cayenne pepper in there. Look, and then I take another sip. <laughs> but um, yeah, you shouldn't be eating heavy at night. So breakfast really should be just fruits or fruit juices or something very light lunchtime should be your heaviest meals and then dinner time should be light as well that's what i recommend how do you get the protein that the body needs if it's uh, if all your off if all you're eating is fruit so protein we don't really need as much protein as we've been bamboozled to think we that we do um, eating excessive amounts of protein is hard on the liver and the kidneys um, and then certain proteins can also well I don't even want to use the word protein like this is also something that I teach inside of my plant-based program understanding what we actually need to build our bodies up body needs amino acids 
the body makes its own protein. So we don't need to eat protein. We just need the amino acids, which are the building blocks. Um, and the body is going to use those to assemble the types of proteins that it needs. We don't need hardly as many as we've been told that we need. Um, and we're definitely not going to get the best quality from eating it secondhand through an animal, etc. And then certain fruits and stuff do have amino acids in them. Amino acids just help build structure. So the skins of certain fruits um, have lots of different amino acids in them. And then you can also juice leafy greens. Like if you want to incorporate leafy vegetation into your diet, I recommend that you juice it versus trying to eat it because when you juice it, you're able to break through the cellular wall and you can extract the nutrients from those leafy greens versus trying to eat them because I already talked about how we really can't digest the leafy greens because they're too coarse and they have too much cellulose in them and we can't really break down the cellulose so juice them and then you can get amino acids from your leafy greens but you don't need a lot um, and I think that a lot of people will notice um, that as they stop worrying about the proteins like I don't worry about my protein at all I really don't and um, I focus more on just trying to make sure I stay properly hydrated that I have enough fiber in my diet and that I get enough natural occurring sugars to keep me energized. That's my focus. I don't care about uh, protein at all. I really don't and I don't focus on it and that's just my way of learning how to undo the programming because that's the first thing that people worry about is protein and it's like that's the least thing you need to be worried about. Let's focus on actually any foods that energize your body and that hydrate you and clean you out instead of worrying about eating something that usually is going to stagnate your digestive process because eating nuts and seeds and beans and a bunch of grains or if you're eating meat as a way to get protein all of those things also come with either toxins that are going to uh, dirty up your body they are hard to digest so they sl uh, they, they make things sluggish um, and they can contribute to mucus buildup and things like that and then we have to also understand that grains and seeds, etc., are literally the seeds of different plants. And seeds don't want to be eaten. They want to be planted in the ground so that they can produce a fruit or a leaf that you could potentially use as medicine. We're not supposed to eat the seeds. This is why a lot of them contain different chemicals and anti-nutrients in them that make it hard for us to consume them. This is why they're hard as a rock. And then if you do eat some of those things, you may experience bloating or gassiness. Like the first time I ever eat, ate quinoa, that sh tore my stomach up. Like I was bloated and gassy for hours and I swore to myself that I would never eat quinoa again. And I realized that these things have to be sprouted and basically in baby plant form if you do choose to still eat them but you will actually probably see more health benefits by minimizing them in your diet altogether. But again, research this stuff, you guys. You gotta research it. These things have a lot of lectins in them. So lectins, um, anti-nutrients, and other chemicals that are in these grains that make them hard for you to digest. And this is why people have so many reactions to them. So eat your fruits. Certain fruits also have proteins in them, like jackfruit has protein in it, avocados, have protein in them the skins of different fruits have uh, well I don't want to keep using proteins I want to say amino acids they have amino acids in them so you'll get them from there what are the juices that you're drinking um, thanks for answering that um, this is a juice that I got from Kroger's it's called uh, citrus cayenne and they were on sale I guess because they're about to go bad in a few days so I bought all of them and you can just find stuff on sale like that. Um, you just got to go to the like the fresh juice section in Kroger's and check them out. These are not those naked juices. I don't actually recommend naked. Um, and what's the other brand? Bolt Farms or Bolt House. I don't recommend any of those because those are processed. They have added sugars to them and then they're also pasteurized. And when you pasteurize something, you're literally killing the natural microbiome of those different fruits and vegetables and the nutrients in them, the bacteria in them that could be beneficial to your digestive guts, they kill all of those. So I like fresh pressed, cold, uh, cold pressed juices. Um, I also recommend that you invest in a juicer on your own so that you can start making your own fresh juices. 
but I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into juicing and all of that right now because like I said, I have 15 minutes. I'm down to six more. Um, but if you want to know about juicing and how to choose a juicer, you need to get my 21 day raw reset. That talks about juicing. I guide you through the process of how to pick the juicer that is right for you and your needs, etc. And then I also give you recipes to start, excuse me, with your, with your juicing journey. So you can check that out. What else? We got six minutes, you guys, and then I'm checking out. Okay. And it's super quiet in here. Usually I got some music playing in the background, but today it was super just like, oh, I'm gonna just go live. It was it was real unplanned and unorchestrated. <laughs> but as you can see, I just been chilling. I haven't been posting a ton on social media here lately, and that's just because I just took a break. When you start really focusing on you and doing what you need to do for you instead of allowing social media to tell you who you're supposed to be and what you need to do, etc., it's a lot easier for you to make changes. But when you're constantly comparing your journey to other people's and just allowing social media to program you with so much information it can interfere with you taking the initiative to do what you need to do so sometimes you do need to detach and also with me you know considering that I share my public life and that I make myself accessible to people in regards to helping with their journeys you know I get bombarded with a lot of energy from other people all the time you know I get a lot of people messaging me um, and seeking help and stuff and sometimes that can be a little over exhausting for me because I'm just one person um, you know I'm not a, a big corporation like Target or Walmart where I have 50,000 employees working up under me this is just me so sometimes I have to make sure that I'm tending to me and taking a step back so I've, I've done that I've, I've taken a step back and I thought today like you know what let me get on here and chit chat let me show my face and um, share some things but yeah this is what I'm doing I'm eating only fruits right now. So no vegetables, no vegetable juices, um, no cooked food, just straight fruit power, okay? So with that being said, you guys, I'm about to get on up out of here. I'm about to cut up me some fruit. I don't even know what I wanna eat first. Do I want some of these raspberries or do I want some of these golden kiwis? I don't even know, might might do a little bit of, of other things um, because these will, com these will will pair together quite well considering that they're both kind of like acidic fruits so that'll be great so i'm about to get up out of here you guys much love thank you all for tuning in and i will see you guys next time i will save this live and like i said i will post it on my youtube channel at some point as well so that it's just easy for you guys to find all of my live videos but peace and love you guys much love and i will see you guys soon